like you need to have left to do this. You have some other skills, Jigging your grave. Yeah. Jigging your grave. <laughs> Boy, that is way down there. Look at that. For them to change what is culturally embedded, you worship on Saturday to make it Sunday. And so what we know is that they had encountered something that transformed their, their worldview, that transformed their belief system, that made them start worshiping on the first day of the week, the day of resurrection. So uh, we remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy on, on Sunday. Um, I really appreciate, as always, what Kobe has been saying. Although I think Suetonius might mention Christ too. I'm, I'm, I'm I, you know, that. Um, no, I'm talking about just that uh, early period of time. Okay. All right. Okay. But uh, he's mentioned by much other, later, but I'm sure the yeah. closest. The story, to <laughs> pretty, but okay, we can talk about that. Um, but I really like what Kobe said um, about how do we know these people said these things. I mean, they did not have a, a dictaphone or a transcriber writing down every speech they had. And so Josephus kind of takes what he knows and he uses what was common in that era to kind of say this is what they said, the gist or the themes. And so when we come to the book of Acts on Pentecost, we have Peter's sermon. And we, people say, well, how do you know Peter said that? Well, it's the same kind of thing. Luke knows what the preaching, the themes of the preaching were, and so, and how the Christian movement was beginning to speak of Christ, and so he kind of does the same thing with Peter when he records Peter's sermon on Pentecost Day. And so I'm going to read the rest of Acts chapter 2 with that in mind, that Luke is picking up on themes that would have been common in the Christian movement, that it was part of the what that we call the kerygma, uh, the earliest kernel of teaching of the Christian movement. So from Acts chapter 2, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. And again, thinking about what are the major themes that are emerging, and we believe inspired by the Holy Spirit, in this new movement. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, or male or female slaves, a uh, word could be used either way. Uh, in these days I will pour my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, and blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall not be turned to darkness and the moon turned to blood before the day of the, Lord, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so what's his point there? Everyone, Jew, Gentile, all these people who were uh, coming into the city, everyone, not just, not just a Jewish moment, expanding to the world, who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. And here you get the kernel of the Christian movement, okay, this universal scope. And then Peter will say, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know this. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, then he quotes a psalm, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. So you get this early Christian movement and this experience, this powerful experience of something and what even non-believers uh, have to say something happened 
that turned unbelief into belief. Some powerful something, and of course we confess it was the resurrection. So this becomes the kernel of this movement as the Spirit is poured out and it becomes for all people of all times. So we have to remember that when this little place, or this place here, was under siege in, you know, and then taken by the Romans in 72, Jerusalem had been destroyed in 70, and so the Christian movement also was kind of forced out into the surrounding region. So we stop here today on Pentecost Sunday to remember what happened all these years ago, and here we are still in that stream of faith, that tradition of faith that confesses Christ as Lord and believes that we've come to faith through the gift of the Holy Spirit that God wills for all people, not just a small group, uh, but men and women of every nation and every tribe. God freely pours out the Holy Spirit upon us. And that's the essence of Pentecost, all right? And so, yes, one of my friends said, I never heard a bad short sermon, all right? <laughs> so we're going to keep it short. God bless you on this Pentecost, and let's pray together. And then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer from this spot. And we remember those, because they believe so much in freedom and hope, um, uh, who took their own lives. What an incredible sacrifice for the cause of freedom. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We pray that you would grant us your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with the gift of yourself, that you who are infinite would fill we who are finite. Lord God, thank you for this day. We pray for our family and friends back home, for our congregations. We pray for this world, that you would grant us your shalom, your peace as we seek to be followers of the way of Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. And we remember before you, Lord God, the sick, uh, those we name in our hearts before you, the grieving, all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Hear us for the sake of Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, let's remember our baptism, that we have been called by the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace, his shalom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's share the peace of Christ with those around us. The peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord, Jim. Peace, God's peace. Peace, Lord, be with you. Peace, Lord, be with you. Peace, Lord. God's peace. Peace, Lord.